Can metaphysics discern God? The answer to that is yes. When we come to understand that metaphysical construct, uh, constructs, concepts, and understandings cannot be met without a conscious mind perceiving that very thing, we come to understand that mind does not evolve by the physicality or the material construct of what we are bound by, which is our bodies. Uh, physicality cannot produce consciousness or mind. If it would, then everything would have a mind. It wouldn't just be us humans, everything else would have a mind. But because we are made uniquely in the image of God, uh, we can come to understand that mind in and of itself had to have come from an ultimate divine mind that allowed us as human beings to be able to perceive and understand certain things. Because we as human beings, we operate entirely different from all other creations in this life. Animals do not operate, be, operate based upon morality. Animals are not uh, reasoning and rationalizing on deeper truths such as mathematical equations or uh, they're not thinking about you know what is morally good and what is moral uh, what is evil they're not thinking about uh, you know quantum mechanics or uh, they're not thinking about past memories with uh, loved ones that they used to love they're not thinking about these things nor are they projecting uh, themselves into the future and visualizing what the next day is going to be what they they want their future to be animals don't do this. Human beings are the only ones capable of doing this. So when we understand that we are both a body and soul, which we should have a dualist mentality because even Christ said in the scriptures, fear him who can cast both body and soul in hell, we come to understand there's a deeper reality to us. And there is plenty of data and proofs that we do in fact have a soul such as the study by Benjamin Libet, a neuroscientist, um, he revealed that we do, in fact, have freedom of the will uh, when he did a brief, um, you know, when he did a study of telling people, I want you to think about pushing the button, wait a second, and then do it. And as they thought about it, certain parts of their brain lit up, and then once they hit the button, those same parts of the brain were still lit up. And then he said, I want you to think about pushing the button, but then refuse to. So uh, the same thing, they thought about pushing the button, the brain lit up, and then when they didn't click the button, the brain went neutral. Those, those parts of the brain were not lit up, which reveals that we don't operate based upon our body. We are not led to do something merely because we think it. There, there's not a deterministic viewpoint there. We have the freedom to think and be uh, uh, initially tempted or intrigued to do something, but we also have the, we have the freedom of the will to refrain from doing that very thing. So that's one of the proofs that we do have freedom of the will, and freedom of the will is metaphysical in nature. So we aren't bound by our bodies and what our, our brain thinks. We actually have a mind that ascends our brain that gives us the freedom of the will to choose to do something or not to do something. And in understanding this, we, are, we come to understand that we truly do have a mind. There is, there is something to us that is outside the physical construct of what we are. But that very thing cannot evolve uh, on its own. Well, certain philosophers think that abstracts and colors are real things in and of themselves. Well, if they hold to that, then they have to hold to the fact that a mind is, uh, in fact, uh, something in and of itself. Um, but we know that, uh, as in previous videos we've discussed, that abstractions and colors are nothing in and of themselves. They are only that which God has declared them to be, so long as there are minds that can perceive that they are certain things. Um, because without a mind, abstractions don't exist, but abstract things such as numbers and whatnot do exist because we have minds that can perceive the differentiation that there are two people in front of us as opposed to three people. Um, so when we come to understand all of this, we come to understand that metaphysics can discern God because it we are more than our body and brain. We have a mind and a soul, and these are spiritual constructs that do not evolve because if they did evolve, then trees and plants and grass blades and animals would all have these, but because we are uniquely made in the image of God, we do have these things. And because we have uh, mind and soul, there has to be something that can obviously create that because there has to be a first cause behind all things. There has to be a ground and basis behind all things who we know to be God because God is the ultimate infinite, divine, eternal mind that has allowed us to have minds to be able to comprehend other metaphysical conceptions as far as morality and numbers and colors and shapes and the like. Uh, it is because of God 
that we have a mind that can grasp these very things. And so metaphysics, therefore, can discern God um, because our mind is able to grasp these metaphysical concepts, but our mind is not evolved. Our mind has been created and given to us by God, and we know that God created abstractions and metaphysical constructs, concepts, and understandings that our mind is able to easily discern. So it's because of God that we have a mind that can discern uh, abstractions and metaphysical truths, and it's because of God that there are such things as metaphysical truths because everything has been derived by God because, again, God is the ultimate, uh, eternal, infinite mind by which all things have come from, both physical and non-physical.